Pronounced. Thank you. For what? Uh, for saving your life again and again and again. You said, baby, get me Michael Bliss. What? <laughs> no, 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 no. I said, baby, I need help. <laughs> get anyone but Michael Bryce. What? He is the most annoying. Excuse me. I have 2020 hearing. I can hear you. The dead guys can hear you. How many times have you nearly got me killed? Not enough. Come on, baby, let's get out of here before he starts the in-flight safety demonstration. Action! <laughs> okay, that's a sign. Just not the one I'm looking for. Come on. Ryan. <laughs> Oh, shit. Yeah. What is this new? Okay. That's his bodyguard. I strongly advise you put down that gun. Say hello to my little fellows. had something in common with her husband. single one of them. Wow. There is nothing greater in life than a natural, pure, strong and solid ejaculation. I care about Bobby's dreams. I do. Uh, Bob, quick sidebar. Uh, first off, huge Red Sox fan. Uh, Celtics, Bruins, Patriots, you name it, even the revolution. Happy, happy to take a pause on the sabbatical, but I really think that you should reconsider working with, with them because they're, uh, uh, crazy. Pull back, drift back. So starting here, yeah. drift back. Drift back as, as, as Tom comes, comes in. in. So give you that energy of Oh, well, just, just like tension. Yeah. And as he wipes, we cut, yeah? Yeah. Okay. When you're looking out, I think Make play more this side than over here. Because on the, there's actually this beautiful town with a church in the distance and you yeah. see everything off on the side. So I think it's better. Okay. When he says, no, it can't be, number level one security's still chasing him. Just give me a slider smile. Mm, yeah. 
because they're, they're out there getting it. Yeah. And then we're buttoned with the yeah. resources. Yeah. I like that. Nothing wrong with blackberries. I just thought there was an interesting angle of this guy who's like taken a, a sabbatical from all any and all violence, like will not touch a gun, uh, will only carry pepper spray. And there's something great about, uh, you know, being in this kind of high octane action film where Sam's character is an assassin. So naturally he is carrying weapons and guns all the time, has no problem with it, has, you know, is just totally integrated into his personality. But my character's kind of at odds with it all. So, um, so I really enjoyed that that aspect or that element of the movie and you know it's uh it's something i've been able to do in a few sort of larger scale action films lately is that you know necessity is the mother of invention so if you take away this idea that we you know we step step up to the plate in all sort of action sequences using uh guns as you know tools of violence and instead we have to think outside the box and say okay like if you're going to do a big fight sequence and you're not going to use guns what do you do you know and it it stretches everybody, it makes everybody better. Uh, it makes me better, you know, so um, I love that. My character, Bryce, is sort of the, the, the kind of, you know, less, I guess, well, more violent, uh, in the more violent world of like Neil Page and Del Griffith from Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. I'm this like exasperated straight man who's just had enough. Uh, and Sam kind of brings this mercurial crazy element and then Selma just like next levels that. So, you know, we're really sort of filtering the narrative through the prism of Bryce's kind of viewpoint and experience of these two people who are literally made for each other. They're both, they're crazy, his crazy matches her crazy and vice versa. So um, they really, it really does bring it to a new level. I'm obsessed and I love this cast. I mean, working with Sam is like this, I always think of, me and Sam are sort of like kelp underwater, like we kind of like move together in this great way with the current. And then when you add Salma into the mix, who just, I think just makes both of us better at what we do, and really wakes us up each and every day. Um, it was such a ball. It was just such a ball, every second of it. Um, you know, I know a lot of actors say that they miss their cast or miss their crew when they're leaving a, a, a set. I don't know if it's always genuine, but with this, this film it really was. Like leaving that set and leaving those guys and us all, you know, heading back to our normal lives, it, was, uh, it, was, it took some adjustment because it was just such a beautiful experience to shoot with them. Salma, you know, had just one of those kind of classic, uh, you know, came in, pilfered all the scenes in the first movie. She's the, the few, the few, the limited screen time she had, she just was such a fan favorite. Um, so it was a no brainer. I think it was one of those things where you're, you know, it's always important to listen to your movie when you're shooting it. So, so Sal Salma really brought something to the table in the first movie that needed to be explored and exploited further. And, and, and I think, I don't even think anyone really talked about it. It was just a given that she was gonna be the headliner of the second film. Sam Jackson, he's not only you know, a legend, but he's just an incredibly generous actor, and I have an, I have a, you know, a really unique chemistry with him. And chemistry is something that I don't think that you can manufacture. It's either there or it's not. It's a weird thing, and and when you have it with someone and you find it with someone, it's special, because you're working with two people that know when to hit the brakes and know when to hit the gas, and it's this unspoken kind of code. Um, and Sam is incredibly, he's an incredibly adept improvisational actor as well, which is, for me, is always a bonus because that's where I come from. So um, working with him in that context is, is, is pretty awesome. And, you know, and I just love him as a person. I just really love Sam. 
he really can kind of make a lot out of very little, and that's what you have to do in these kinds of action movies these days. So, and he's he's very good at listening to the movie, which I think is important. You know, like understanding that you have a script and a blueprint and a direction in which you're going, but you also can sometimes pause, listen to your film, and pivot and change and move in other directions. And he's really good at that. Um, and also just a good friend of mine. I love, I love. I still text with him this morning. <laughs> he's just like a he's a good soul. The sequel builds on, on the first movie in a delightful way. Sometimes it can be terrible because the sequel will just sort of exploit all the great things about the first movie and then reiterate them again. This movie doesn't do that. It sort of hijacks the tone and the sentiment in a great way, but gives life to so many more new um, and wild elements. So uh, it really does improve upon that. Also, like it was conceived from the get-go as an action comedy, unlike the first movie, which was sort of pivoted and, and, and recalibrated into something uh, shortly before shooting. I just remember that it was, it was mostly Salma and I that were soaking wet for half the movie. We were jumping in, you know, oceans and rivers and streams and all kinds of stuff. I mean, the movie really covers a cross, sort of cross-European kind of adventure. So um, lots of stunts, lots of bumps, lots of bruises. Um, but they're all spoils of war, you know. It's all part of the job. It's fun. Shooting in Croatia was special. I mean, it's not every day you get to go, um, you know, to a country like that and and really immerse yourself in that culture and and you know and and spend time you know in that on among those people and you know in those sites. Also, when you're shooting a film, you get you're sort of sent to the most amazing places and locations that that country might have to offer. So. Um, I loved shooting in Croatia. It's always great and special, too, when you get to go play someplace that you've never been to before. So I was there with my whole family. They loved it as well. It was really beautiful. I didn't know that there was going to be a sequel, but I was wishing for one because I love my character so, so very much, and it was so short. I remember being frustrated not to be able to continue to be here for longer. And I was, and I remember thinking, oh, I hope there's a sequel, and they call me back because I love Sonia so much. And so I was super excited when I found out that um, there was a sequel, that Sonia was back, and that now I have a very, 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 very big role. So I, I, you get a lot of Sonia on this one. The proudest about creating this character is that she's crazy, but she's not randomly crazy. I was very specific about the choices. She's full of contradictions, but I kind of have my own Bible of how she thinks and um, her contradictions make sense to me. And um, I think that it's very consistent. And one of the things that I love about her is that her thought process, it's really strange, but it consist, it's consistent in the strangeness. So it was, it's been so much fun doing it. I'm super excited that I, I have such a great role and that I get to play it for a long time because she's in most of the movie. And it's, it's really a female action lead. And I am extra excited because I get a lead in an action movie at 52. And this gives me like an butterflies in my stomach, gives me like an extra satisfaction. She's definitely kick ass. And um, I love her and I think uh, it's gonna prove that strong women can be very enchanting at any age for the audience. One of the other things that I love about playing Sonia is that most of it is improvised. I got to improvise a lot. And so I love the freedom. I'm very grateful to Patrick for, for trusting me that way. And I am so, so, so lucky because uh, I, I got to, to work with two of the best actors in the world that also happen to be great at improvisation. And so I think that 
it, it makes it very fresh. We knew our characters really well and we understood our situations and we were able just to like go wild and free uh, in every scene, in every take. And that's been delicious to be able to improvise in this character that I know so well, that I love so much with such amazing talent. I think Sam and I immediately clicked. We have great chemistry, great energy together, great understanding of each other. Um, and I love their love story. You know, it's fantastic to be watching a movie that is a love story, even it's an action movie. And it's about staying in love, not falling in love for the first time, but staying in love for a long time. And I find that refreshing also, you, a little bit more original than your average. And, but in the first movie, I didn't get to have any scenes with Ryan. And it's just been such a delight. Uh, like I said, we improvised a lot together. And it, 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 I really found myself waking up really looking forward to to the adventure of knowing what the heck we were gonna do and say. And uh, I have so much respect for his talent. Um, and not to mention some, I mean, I cannot, I've learned a lot from them and I've learned a lot from, about me from working with them. Um, I, I will forever uh, have such a great memory of this movie because of them. It was very strange because I, in this movie, again, I go to a familiar set, it's the same director, Patrick, Sam, Ryan, and on top of it, I get Antonio. Yes, my seventh film with Antonio. So it really felt like a family. And um, of course, we've done so many films together, but our relationship in this one is completely different, but I, I feel so comfortable working with him, you know? We really get to just have fun and go with the flow and enjoy our time together. I'm very grateful to Patrick for the opportunity of this making my, my, my role a, a substantial role with an arc and a, it's, it's been great working with him. I'm very, very grateful that he involved me in the process of the script from the beginning and um, allow me to really bring in her personality and, and uh, it's, he's a lot of fun. I think there's a lot more comedy in this one than the last one, a lot more. Um, but I think uh, what really worked about the last one is the relationship between these two actors. I don't know that there's two other actors that can do action comedy better than these two. And th it's just such a great chemistry, you know, the alchemy between them. And I feel really privileged that I got thrown in, in, in the middle. And I think that it takes their relationship to a new level. So if you didn't see the last one, it doesn't matter, the film stand on its own, but if you saw the, the, the last one, then um, it's more about the evolve, uh, how this relationship evolves. And it's not just the action, but it's really about the relationship. For some reason, Sonya likes him in a, in a different way, you know. Uh, I can't say that I don't like him. Uh, I know that we have enmity and, you know, we're, we're in a kind of business where once something happens, you don't kind of get over it. Uh, so I haven't gotten over the fact that he's been trying to kill me and I've been trying to kill him for so long. Uh, she wants me to and I'm trying desperately to make her happy. Uh, she sees something in him that I don't particularly see. The dynamic between, you know, Bryce and, and me is always going to be, you know, contentious in a way. Um, 
I think that Darius is trying very hard to see what Selma sees and to give her the air to make it possible that you know, they're, they're okay in a way. Uh, she wants to nurture him. Uh, and in a sense this time because I seem to be having the romantic problem, he's grown a bit from what happened to him. Uh, and he's trying to help me get through an emotional state that um, I think is new for Darius for sure. And uh, definitely uh, catch his catch can for <laughs> for him uh, helping me because he doesn't know that much about love. It's kind of great that he meets her alone and not with me and her. So it's kind of great that, that that happens when she just pops up in his life and He's trying to do whatever, and he finds out what it is that I told him attracted, <laughs> attracted us to each other in that seedy bar. You know, all of a sudden, you know, his first interaction with her was a big gunfight. So it's kind of like, <clears throat> okay, you are the same people, and I see why he loves you, because he always asks. Um, and I think he took to her in a different kind of way um, that she continues to amaze him in terms of, I thought Darius was crazy, but wow, <laughs> you know? So she continues to surprise, but she also continues to draw him in, in a way, you know, because she truly wants to love him or wants him to understand that she cares about him. Two crooks in love and what that is, you know, it's like, it's bigger than Bonnie and Clyde because, you know, they're out there and they're European and they're doing this whole, you know, thing and, and it's kind of wonderful. So, I mean, action sequences you know, tend to come and go and people have seen them a lot and they expect something to happen. You watch this, you watch that, and people are constantly trying to find how to make a bigger, better set piece, you know. And I think, you know, that the moments that we can watch Selma and... Um, Sonia and Darius together. We had, a, we had a big problem doing that on set too, you know, calling her real name a lot. Um, but seeing them together and the joy that those two people have being together and who they are and what those personalities mean and, and the links that they'll go to to stay together, you know, is the excitement for me of what happens. Ryan is one of the quickest actors I work with on his feet. You know, you throw something at him, he throws something right back at you. It might be from left field, but it fits in an odd kind of way and it allows you to respond to him in a specific way. He almost sets you up for what he wants, you know, wants to happen. Uh, very smart actor, uh, really, really, you know, prepared when he shows up. And you know, he gives it his all. He's, he's a great guy to work with. I've known Selma for a long time. We just hadn't, hadn't really worked together. Uh, she's incredibly funny and, and hardworking. She, she's constantly trying to find that little key that's going to make a scene work for her, that's going to push her to that place that her emotion takes over and the mechanics of the of the of the situation fly out fly out the window so that she can just flow into what's going on there. Uh, wonderful, wonderful person to you know bounce off of. Having those two people together in situations kind of allows for um, that sort of comic confusion that's happened in a lot of different kind of movies. And there are times when it's like, you know, three stooges with bullets. Uh, which is kind of, you know, a scary concept in, in its own. But uh, they're both, you know, wonderfully um, adept on their feet when things change. They can just, boom, they just jump into the change. Or there's a discovery moment inside the scene that we hadn't discovered while we uh, 
uh, we're rehearsing it, we can just continue to flow with it because it's such a good thing that happened in there. To have an opportunity to be in a film with him and to be sort of a foil in another kind of way, you know, it's, it's great joy. You know, I watched him do so much stuff and, and respect his ability. Uh, and I always thought if I was in some, you know, movie with him, it was going to be like this serious kind of thing, because that's what he does, you know, boom. Uh, but to see him here, it's like, oh, man, this is great. You know, it's kind of like I can use that and assess him in that way because of that respect and what's happening. And the fact <clears throat> that I find out all this stuff about his character in the movie kind of piles on that. You know, you kind of pile on that. Oh, he's all that. He's all that. He's all that. To finally do something with Morgan, which is, like I said, once again, I always assumed that whatever I did with Morgan was going to be some kind of serious, you know, heavy kind of thing. And to end up here was it's kind of great just because I wanted to laugh with him and I wanted to smile with him. And it was a real opportunity to you know, just look at each other and kind of laugh and go, how do we end up here? Look at, because I mean, we were out there pounding the pavement together, going to unemployment uh, at a certain point in our lives and doing all this stuff. And, you know, he was off doing what he was doing and soaring and being God. And I was lucky enough to achieve what I've achieved to finally come together at this point, you know, as a great kind of, wow, look where we are, you know, from, from our humble beginnings. You know, to, to be able to be in this place and work together. They genuinely connected with the characters the last time they saw it. Uh, and like I said, they wanted to see more of Selma. This time they will. Uh, and the, the connection between Ryan and I, you know, only gets better because, you know, the more time we spend together, the more we know about each other, the more we... We love, hate each other in a way that, you know, makes sense. And uh, hopefully people will come in and buy into that again. I like the possibility of doing comedy. I like the possibility also of doing villains. Because villains are way more open than heroes. Heroes, um, you know, have to behave in a very specific pattern of morality, and uh, so they are trapped in there. And people love them, but they are very boring to play. And, uh, and but the bad guys can do literally anything, anything, especially if the character is a so sociopath, as this one is. You can just throw anything on the pot and you can do any soup that you want with him. And that attracted me. And also, also the possibility of working again with Patrick, the director. He's a millionaire, um, kind of become a metaphor for anybody in Europe who is in disagreement <clears throat> with the European Union. And so what we do with it is just to put a magnifying glass on him and uh, make him look a ridiculous right-wing, uh, you know, oppositor to practically anything. Uh, he's fighting for the rights of the Greek people, but I don't think the Greek people actually, in real life, would love to have a representative like him. At all. And at the end, what happened with these characters is that they are literally fighting for themselves. A character like this is very open. And, and I thought, actually, at the beginning when I came over here that I was going to play him more in uh, comedy. But then, as I was just on the set, uh, the characters started getting really serious and threatening. And I just realized that if the villain in a movie is not threatening, you don't have a movie. You have to actually become really dangerous or the audience actually uh, 
want the good guys, they want the good guys to defeat him, and you know, with all his complications. And the guy had a lot of power, a lot of money, he had an army practically playing for him. How are you going to defeat that? And so, and at the same time, he's very intelligent. So, you know, as I was playing him, uh, the comedy was falling apart, and he became kind of a much more uh, realistic uh, character. Again, you know, it, it was a little bit um, in the mind of everybody that we were going to take the character completely out of the box and create a character visually um, very much out there. Uh, meaning, you know, very colorful, hairdos, a number of things. And we started from there. But as we were just, you know, in the process, we just started thinking that, you know, we were making the character just way too ridiculous to be believable. And so we start, you know, just going down. Still is, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, very flamboyant, but it's not as much as, as we thought at the beginning. I, I thought that we took him to a, a believable, you know, uh, character, believable character that, though he's, you know, very, uh, you know, into, a, very questionable fashion, um, by the way, but uh, but it's still, you know, it's not completely crazy. I didn't have so much action to do. Um, I did some in um, London. The boys just shooting some weapons and, uh, you know, kicking and being kicked. Um, I used to love those things when I was younger. Now I don't care for those things anymore, really. I mean, I do it, it's fun, but um, I prefer, um, you know, a double to take the, the, the bidding, you know. Nobody confessed that. I didn't do it. I mean, when I, when I was younger, when I did Zorro or I did Desperado or movies like that, I really did a lot of my stunts. The only thing that I didn't do was the acrobatics. And I was not just, um, you know, commercializing that. I just did it and it was fun. I, I'm not going to tell you now, you know, that I'm almost 60, that I'm actually just doing everything that you see on the screen because it's not true. There are great professionals there that they do a great job. That's real comedy, but it's an intelligent comedy. They, you know, they are confronting each other all the time, but at the same time they need each other and they love each other. It's a classic. We have seen that in many couples in the, in the past, you know. Uh, you can go even back to The Sting, you know. I remember Paul Newman and... Robert Redford playing that kind of back and forth ping pong game and, and it's very effective always, you know, and on top of that you put a woman like Salma who is funny and, uh, you know, uh, how can I describe Salma after so many years? Uh, explosive, <laughs> maybe is the word. Uh, and so you create a cocktail that is very attractive to watch, you know, as they, as they go. And there are relationships between them in many different ways, and they are kind of uh, they have the capacity. These actors that I'm talking about, um, Sam and Ryan and, and Salman, they have the capacity to laugh of themselves. And when you do a comedy like that, you have to have that possibility. If you don't do that, the audience is not going to buy the game. And the end is just that it's a game. I love the energy of uh, Salma. She got a beautiful aura that goes with her everywhere. And I think that the success of Salma is based on that, on that kind of beautiful thing that she exudes to everybody that works with her. Um, she's very funny. And uh, funny in our days is a degree, is a virtue. You know, in the world so confused and so violent to have uh, people like that around is, uh, is very good. I really love her. He's capable to deal with all of these crazy actors who are asking for everything every day. All of them are just going to change lines, but if they change those lines, they're going to affect the lines of another one. So he got to just put together all this mess every day. And he does very well. He's very patient, you know, with all of us. It's understandable, you know, everybody's trying to work in their character better. And uh, so sometimes it's very complicated, you know, just to put... Uh, so many stars in the same, uh, you know, in the same table. 
and play with them and just uh, obtain something that is actually worth for everyone and for the movie itself. So I think he plays that game uh, beautifully because it's not, it's not an, I wouldn't like to be on his skin actually. Uh, no, but, uh, but he does well. Sam Jackson, I've known for almost 40 years. We worked together in New York back when we were, when he was a kid, I was a little older. Uh, and we, we hadn't worked together since, and I like Sam a lot. Uh, and uh, I didn't know Ryan except through his work. Uh, but that's as good a come on as you can get. He's one of those people who's been in the business long enough to have like a, a, a global network of friends and uh, resources. So that's primarily what makes him one of the top, is that what the resources that he can call on. Uh, and that's, uh, you, you know, there are some people to the manner born. You know, you're just born, once you figure out what it is you're born for and you get to do it, I used to like one of those type people too. Yeah. I used totally believable. Uh, I've seen almost every movie he's made. He's made. He seems to make one every six months. Uh, so I can't say I've seen them all uh, because I keep stumbling over ones that I, hmm, I didn't know he was in there. Uh, but it's it's his chops. His actor's chops. He's got a good set. Um, you always believe Sam. I, I don't care what kind of situation you see him in, it's never incongruent. Smooth, easygoing, uh, very giving. Uh, I think the thing that uh, sets really good actors uh, apart is the ability to just give. Uh, when I was uh, starting out, um, we had exercises and trust, uh, and that's what giving requires. You trust who you're giving to. Obviously, he knows what he's doing, what he wants, and how to do it. Uh, he explains uh, all the time about how he's going to make something fit, you know, because I'm one of those whose questions are, wait a minute, why are we doing this, you know? Uh, and he's really good at explaining that, well, this is what's going to happen in post, and I'm going to do this, and uh, um, I'm going to shoot some more, fill this in, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's one of those directors who was not secretive at all. He's telling you uh, what he's doing and how he's going to accomplish it. And uh, that's fun because in, um, that gives you this sense of collaboration when you know why you're doing things for a director. FuturePreviews.com Go behind the scenes of movies. Subscribe to Future Flicks YouTube channel.